Okay, so today we'll be looking at uh, chapter seven of the book, which is about uh, workflows, uh, the code style, because we'll be looking at how we can style our our R code uh, using the Dativest uh, style guide to make our codes uh, to be more consistent, uh, to be more cleaner, to be more clearer. Because uh, the book starts uh, with this uh, mod uh, kind of uh, motivation that is always good that while we are writing uh, our R code, that we should style our code uh, using a certain uh, the Tidyverse style guide, which will make our code more easier for any other person we are sharing this code with to be more easier for them to be able to read through, go through our, our code and to also for them to be able to easily understand uh, the whole concept. So the book uh, has a link to the Tidyverse style guide in which if I click on the link from the book, I think there is a link Yeah. Yeah, so this link is about uh, the, uh, the style guide and in which tidyverse uh, they normally adopt in all uh, their code in which they are, they are using in their packages. So this are the, is a style guide in which uh, the book kind of like uh, recommend uh, that our code uh, should follow, which will be seen in demo. We also have uh, the tidyverse, uh, the styler package, this styler package, I think, is on CRAN. Once we install the styler package, I will have access to the add-in because it's going to be very useful for us while we are working with our R code. I will be doing some kind of demonstration on how we can use uh, this styler package to style our R code to improve our uh, workflow. So the first thing in which the book recommends is that we need to, first of all, uh, load the tidyverse in our code in order for us to have access uh, to the functions from the tidyverse. Then they also recommend that we load the NYC flight 13 data sets is what, what we'll be using uh, for the demo. So yeah, the book kind of start, start with a, it kind of start with a little demo in which they kind of explain that it would be better when we are writing our code, the naming of our code, we always be, we should always kind of like, use a, we should kind of like use an underscore like to separate uh, the, the text, the names. We should always use this camel. I think this is the camel case. We should always use the camel case uh, syntax in order for us to name our code. Like for example, we are having short underscore flights, which is for like the short flights, then which we assign, we pick our flights data set, we filter, for all the airtime that is less than 60, then we are assigning everything to the short underscore flight. So the book recommend that we should always strive uh, to use uh, this syntax in, in our code. And we always avoid that we should avoid doing something like this, which uh, is very, is, is because it's going to be very uh, difficult for somebody to go through this. This is short flight. That somebody might not be easily to read uh, the code. So the book kind of explained that we should always try to adopt uh, the camel, uh, the camel case uh, syntax. So let's let's grab this and see what how the code looks like in my house studio. So first of all, they have library, they load the library. Tidyverse, and they have the load library, NYC flight 13 for the data sets. This is, I think, demo, demo one. So first of all, we have a flight data set, which is from the NYC flight 13. We have the flight data set in which the book was using for explaining, which we have the year, month, day, departure time, schedule time. Then we are only filtering for all the air time, uh, air time that is less than 60. So when we grab this, if you grab this, 
we filter for this for all the arrival time, then we are assigning this back to short flights. So first of all, we are having flights. So for us to be able to make this to be more neater, we are supposed to take this to the next line because we are having flights. And then we are filtering for all the airtime that is less than 60. So when we run this, we are going to have access to this new object in which we have in our environment. So this is what the book like kind of say, we should always name our the name of our new objects using camel case. So let's go back to the example in the book. And yeah, the book avoid, you say we should always avoid something like this. So, so here the book was like in this other section, the book is talking about uh, spaces. It's talking about dealing, uh, dealing with uh, spaces. Uh, it's talking about dealing with spaces. So what they do explain here is that we should always put spaces on either side of uh, the mathematical operator. Here we are, we are having, we are having an operations where we have A plus B. Within A, we have a space plus a B, then raised to the power of, raised to the power of what two, then we, we have a space and we divide by this. So it's kind of explained that we should always kind like to give spaces between all these mathematical operations so that we can easily see uh, the intent of what is going on during that process. Because once we grab the whole of this, we are assigning it in to a new object called Z. So once we run this, we are going to create a new object in our environment that is Z that is holding our computation. So the book kind of like say that we should avoid writing code in this way, because we can look at this. We are having our assignment operator. There is no space before the opening brackets. So it becomes very difficult for somebody to read the code because if we style this code, this way we can say that this is Z, we have a space, then we have our assignment operator, then we have another space. So it, it makes uh, the code uh, to be clear. So anybody that is reading your code is going to know that here at this line, we are having an assignment. At this line, we are having just A plus B. Then at this line, we are having raised to the, we are raising A plus B to the power of two. Then we are having a space. Then we divide that uh, by D. Please, uh, at any state point, feel free to, uh, to stop me in case you have any question or any further uh, clarification or, or, or any other any for contributions. Please feel free to stop me. So in this, uh, in this other section, the book, is, uh, the book kind of explains that we should not put spaces inside or outside uh, parentheses for regular function calls. Here, we are having a function, which is mean. Then we are having x, then we have space na.rm equals true. So it's going to check, are there any missing uh, data in, the, in our object, in our vector, which is x? So if there are any missing data in the object called x, so we are going to omit the, the missing data, then we compute uh, the mean. So the book is kind of like saying, we should avoid writing code like this. We should avoid writing code like this because it's going to be very difficult for someone else that is going to, uh, through the code. is is going to be very difficult for them to understand uh, what is going on uh, in that uh, in that process. It's going to be very difficult for them to debug your code. Maybe there might be issues somewhere. Of someone might easily go through this code. He might find it very difficult to understand. So it's kind of like saying we should. Always style, uh, strive to style our code uh, using uh, this uh, approach. Uh, for this other example, so we are still using uh, the flight data sets. We are still using the flight data sets. So after the flight data sets, it's always good. It's always good that uh, each of our function, we place each of our function in separate lines so that we can see actually uh, what we are doing in those process. So we are having the first step where we are feeding in our data frame, then we are piping it into a mutate function to create a new variable here. We are saying speed, which will be a 
which will be a function of arrival time divided by the distance, which we are creating a new object called speed. So here is going to be departure time, which we are using a, uh, I think is an integer division divided by 100. So we are creating a new object called departure hour. So the next line here, we are doing departure time divided by 100. So we, we are creating this other object. So if we grab uh, this code and run, so we are going to create, I think, three, three new columns, which is like a modification of our, of our previous uh, variable in which we have in our flight data frame. We are doing some modification and we are creating, we are creating new variable, which will be a modification of the existing uh, variable. So in this other line, the book is talking about pipe because in our previous discussion, we have look at pipes, we have looked at, at the Madrid R pipe, and we also look at uh, the native out, native uh, the native pipe. So here we are having the flight data sets. So here we are piping this into the next argument, which is a filter. Here we are only checking for, we are, we are only checking for all the unique value that is the arrival delay and also tail number. We are dropping all the missing data. We are only retrieving all the unique value. Then and then in the next line, we are doing the counts of all the destination. We are doing for all the counts of destination. Let's see the, this example, how it works in our house studio. Let's see this example. Let's see this. Okay, so here we are having a data set called flights, which is this. This is the data set call flight. We have seen this already. We are doing filter. We filter for all, we filter out all the missing data in the flight data sets. So we have this. So when we do that, then we only count for all the destination to see the unique destination. So when we do that, it's going to give us a new column called destination. We can see that here we are having 254. Here we are having 264 observations. So this is going to give us this, is going to return a table back with 94 more rows. Okay, so. Okay, so go back. So the book kind of like said, we should avoid writing code in this way, because here in this way, we are putting all the code in just a one single line. It's going to be, if you are writing the code this way, it's going to make it very difficult for someone that is reading through. Maybe we can share this code with someone else. It's going to be very difficult uh, for them to follow through this code. So it's always good. The book explained that we should always try as much as possible to style our code using this syntax. We should style it using this syntax to style our code this way, because this way is going to be make the whole process uh, to be very difficult because here we are having filter flights and then we filter out all the missing data and then we do count. So in this way, it's going to be very uh, difficult. So it's better we always drop each function in a separate line to make our code to be neater, to be more clearer for someone else that is going through. So this is another example. It's another example where they have uh, flights and then they, they pass it into a group by, they group by all the tail number, and then they go into the next line. Always, we always put the pipe at the end of every line is always a pipe to turn it to the next argument, which will be a summarize. So within the summarize, we are looking for delay, which is the mean of all the arrival delay, permitting, removing all the missing data. And then we are looking for the count. So if we do this, we are going to create uh, this two new column for both the, the mean of all the uh, delay and also the counts. So they always, they, they said we should avoid something like this, writing code uh, like this. Because when I started learning R before, I, no, I normally write code in this way. I normally write uh, my code this way, but it's always good we follow this uh, syntax. Because like here, we can see that we are having an opening uh, bracket for our function, the closing and the opening bracket. So it becomes very clear for you to see 
uh, the intent of your code in case you make error in which step, maybe we are missing one of this opening bracket, we can easily, easily detect, oh, I was missing one opening bracket here, so you can easily go there and put fix it up because we are opening here. We need to have a closing bracket. Here we have an opening and closing. So here also it becomes uh, clear for somebody to go through your code, they can easily see uh, where you are uh, uh, making errors. They can easily fix it. Uh, uh, they can easily uh, fix uh, this code uh, for you. So the next example in which uh, the book uh, explain is another example in which they explain. So here we are having a flight. This is still the flight data set. So they also, they pipe it into the next argument, which is a group by, group by all the tail number. And then they summarize, they look for delay, which is the mean of arrival delay for meeting all the missing data. And then they look for the count. So this is an example of code. So let's, in this example, let's use another approach. See how we can use the style. Let's use another approach for this. This, this example, as I said earlier, once you install the Styler package, this package, I have it installed already. I have it installed already. So we have the styler, let me confirm. This is the styler package, it's on CRAN. So once you, are, once you install this package, you will be able to use it in your script, but I've already installed it, so I will not install. So what we have here is that, let's see how we can use it. So I just highlight the code, then I say Control Shift P to get have access to the command palette. So it's going to bring up uh, this dialog box. So I just say Styler. Okay. Style active file. So, so once I click on Styler, it's going to bring up uh, this. So let's say Style Selection. So because I have selected this, so let's just click on Style Selection. Yep, you can see automatically that it has styled this code for us. You can see flights and then it give us what is the next argument uh, group by which is the tail number and then summarize it, it, it just styled. This is the initial code that I brought in. This, our, this was the initial code. Let's say we have this. Then we should avoid writing code this way. When I use the styler package, I was able to style the code using the study verse style guide. So once you just highlight, then we use this function, styler, style selection. So it's going to what style the code for us. It's going to help us format the code in the right format. So I should go back to the notes. So this is the same example in which in this example, they are still using the flight data set and then they pipe it into a group by, they pass in the tail number and then they did some summary statistics. So here they look for delay, which is for the mean of all the arrival delay, dropping all the missing data and then they did look for the count, which is the same thing as I explained earlier. So this example here, is, they said it is okay to check some of this rule if your pipeline fits easily in one line. So this is an example. In this example, the entire code, it can fit in in one line because we are having DF and then we say mutate, which will create a new column. They said then Y, which would be the new column we want to create, which will be X plus one. So since this, can fit it into one line. So we can also do it like this. But in a, in a more, uh, using the, the real convention, we are supposed to, at the end of the pipe, 
we need to take this motet to the second line. But since this can all fit in one line, they do recommend we can also do something like this. But uh, this is another step. This is how we were supposed to do it. So where we have DF and then we say motet Y, which is a new column, then X plus one. So, okay, so now this is ggplot2. This is example of a ggplot2, just like our normal tidy verse in which uh, we always have access to the pipe. In ggplot2, the plus sign is also, is also the pipe in ggplot2 because we use the plus sign uh, to add layers, different layers to our visualization in which uh, we are creating. So here, this is an example where they have the flights and within the flights, they pass it into a group by, they group by all the months and then they summarize. Within the summary, they say delay, which is the mean of arrival delay, dropping all the missing data. And then they pipe this to what? Uh, ggplot. Then within the aesthetics, then the map X axis should be all should be all the months, then the y axis should be all the delay time, then plus, which is a pipe because we are adding a new layer, plus sign, which is a new layer, they say jump point, plus also what jump line. So if you do this, if you do that, uh, somebody mic is on, additional. Your mic is on, please, can you mute your mic? So when we do this, so we are going to have this, uh, we are going to have this, which makes our code to be written in, in a proper way. So, so again, if you, can, if you can fit all of the argument to a function on a single line, put each argument on its own line. So this is an example here, we are having flights, we are, having, we are grouping by destination and then we do some summary. We then we do some summary statistics where we have distance, which is going to be mean of all the distance. Then we have speed, which will be mean of all the airtime divided by distance, then dropping all the missing data. Then we pipe this into GG, we feed this into ggplot2 within our aesthetics. We know that the x-axis will always be be the distance, the y-axis is going to be the speed, then we're adding new layers with a plus, then we said the jump smooth, then method should be lowest, then we are spanning this, we are spanning it to our smoothing, our confidence band should, should, be, should be fixed, our entire range of our data set, so the span should be zero by 50%, then the way off the standard error should be false, because we do not want to fit the standard error on the on the visualization, then color of the of the line should be white, then size four. Then we add the last line, which is uh, for our jump points. We add the last line, which is jump points, which is going to plot uh, the points and on on our. So, but if we but going through this also because. Before now, at times I used to receive some script where somebody would just write within the ggplot, he passing his aesthetic mapping. Within the same line, how I used to write before, I would still go ahead and say jump smooth. I still go ahead and put jump points in that case. So in, in that case, it makes it very easy because our code is going to run through uh, the entire line because uh, the our studio ID is be becomes uh, very difficult for you to, because once the code goes beyond 80 lines, it cannot fit uh, the screen. It's going to keep on writing, but that is why I love uh, uh, the syntax if you are programming in VS Code, because if your line just go above, it will automatically, it's going to reformat uh, your code for you. The, the more line we put, it's going to make sure you always reformat it in a, in a right format. But the book kind of explain that we should follow this uh, convention when we are uh, writing our code because it's going to improve our workflow. So in this section is that uh, the book kind of explain 
that is very easy that we should break our code into different section. We should always section our code. Maybe we are having load data, load packages. Uh, we are, let me show an example because there is a, let me show an example. So let me say, create a new script here. New scripts. Okay, so for us to do that, we just have to say Control Shift R. So when we write Control Shift R, it's going to bring out this. So maybe I can just say load required packages that I'm using for my analysis. So this section is going to be for all the packages. So you know here you are going to have your library or your library maybe tidyverse, tidyverse that we are using today library, NYC flight 13. So that is that. So maybe we do again control shift and R. We can just say import data set. We import our data set in this chunk. So here we can have something like this. So data, which will be flights, which is what we are working on. Okay. So here, Control Shift R, we can just say uh, data, data wrangling. So data wrangling. So we will have our. So the beauty of this is that we can easily navigate in each step where we will want to go to, because if you look at, at my Studio ID here, I have data wrangling here, which is the last step. If I click on it, if I click on it, these are other chunk in which I have created. These are other chunk. I can say, okay, I want to go to import data set. So I'll just click to there and it will take me to that chunk. So I can easily do my, what I want to do in that chunk. Maybe I want to go to import data set so I can easily navigate through uh, in that process. Okay, this is what I want to do. I can easily go through there and, and fix uh, that line. Then I come back uh, to my, so that is what uh, the book kind of explained that we should follow uh, that syntax. That is what they were trying to explain here. Here we have load data, plot data. We should, uh, if you are using a map, it's going to be command plus shift plus R to, not, to have access uh, to that uh, palette. So if you are using a uh, Windows, just like me, it's going to be Control plus Shift plus R to have access uh, to that. So that is what uh, the book uh, kind of explains. So in the last section here in the book, they have some exercise. So let's go back because I copied this exercise. We'll do the exercise here. Let's go back, I think the exercise is here. So this is the first exercise. Okay, this is the first exercise I got. So here they're having a flight data set. Just as they explained, it's always good we have a space. We have our data set, we have a space. So wait, let me wait, I will copy this and paste somewhere also. Uh, copy it so that we'll use Styler also. Styler example. So we'll look at the two. So, so let's work with the first one where we edit it manually. So this is flights. So I put a space. Then the next line, we take this to the next line, which is filter. So we filter for all the destination that is equals to I A H. Okay, so we have a space, then we go to the next line. The next act, the next line is going to be a group by. So we are grouping by what? We are grouping by year, month, year, month, and day. So the next one, we have a space here. Then the next thing is going to be we summarize. So the first year, we can take this to the next line. This is going to give us all the counts. So the next line, I can have this here, which will be delay, which is the mean of arrival delay. 
NA.RM equals true. So we can take this code this way so that we know we open it here and we close it here. So the next one will be space. Then we filter for all the counts that is greater than 10. So if you write the code this way, uh, this it becomes very clear. If somebody is going through your code, is reading the code, it becomes very clear because they can understand that this step, we are first of all, we are feeding in our data frame. So we pass it into the next, uh, we pipe it into the next uh, function, which is a filter. We filter for all the destination that is equals to this. Then we, we, we pipe it to a group by, we are grouping by year, month, and day. Then we do some summary. We do some we do some summarization where we look for the counts and the mean of all the delay. Then we filter out uh, where the count is greater than 10. So if we run that line, we run that line. Because I am on the Zoom, my uh, studio is going to slow. OK, if we run that line, we are going to get this as our final answer. Okay, so the next one now I say styler. So let's make I light this code and so control shift P uh, to have access to this. So let's say uh, style selection. Uh -huh. Yeah, so when we use the styler, you can see that it automatically reformats our code for us. Automatically, the styler package reformat our code. Instead of we to do this manually, automatically reformat this code for us using uh, the syntax in which uh, the diverse are uh, the rule required. Okay, so let's see the second exercise. So I'll still copy this. We'll still use Styler to style this code. Styler. We still use Styler. So first of all, let me do it manually. So this is the flights. I have a space to I pass. The next line is going to be filter. So I filter for all this is equals to this comma, and then destination. Destination that are all the destination that is equals to these two condition where these two condition is true. I need those conditions. So the next line, I look for all these. Uh, here we have a space so that we can read it. We have a space. Here also, we need to have a space so that it will be clear what we are doing in that uh, process. So we have a space. So here, we need to go into a new line. Here also, we have a space that is less than uh, 2,000. Then we have a space here. We go into a group by, we group by all the flights. Then we are summarizing. I always love this way. Delay equals to delay, which is equals to mean, mean of arrival delay, removing all the missing data. Then cancel, which is equals to sum, is dot n is dot n a arrival delay sum all the missing data that is that is in arrival delay. Okay, so here, what are we doing here? We are looking for the counts. I think here. Okay, so when we have something like this, we just run this, and we get our final result. But look, using the styler package, we don't need to do it manually. We just need to highlight our code. Once we highlight our code, we just press Control plus Shift plus P. If you are on a Windows, but if you are on Mac, it's going to be Command Shift P. So once I press Control Shift P, uh, the palette command uh, this will open this dialog box in our studio. So I just need to click on Style uh, Selection. So once I click on style selection automatically is going to reformat uh, that code. It's going to format the code uh, into the right format in which 
we want for our analysis. I think uh, that is all we have in the book because we have seen that we have seen how to use uh, the styler package. We can see how we can grab our output, how we can reformat it uh, in a more neater way in which it will become very easy for we to share this code with others for them to be able to go through our analysis uh, workflow. I think that is all uh, we have for this chapter. I don't know if there are any comments, any further contribution or question is highly welcome. Hello. Hello, Adolin, Fanny, Olukunle. Uh, I don't know, this is what I have for this chapter. Are there any inputs? Hello? Hello. Hello. We are good. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. I can still hear you. Yes, I said this is what I have for the chapter. Are there any contribution? I don't know. That's okay. Yeah, that, that's really good. I learned a lot of new stuff about the Stylar, and I really did not know about the package. So maybe I start playing with it. Thank you so much for introducing that. It is really helpful. Thank you. Hello, Dolin. I don't know if you have any comments or contribution. It's like you joined late today. Mm, me, I joined earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey, Oluwa Femi, thank you. Yeah, I did join late a bit. But I didn't learn so much today. I also didn't know that in the R Markdown you can actually see your data wrangling load in loading a package or something, and you can actually just go down and select which part you want. Also, the style of packages informing, and I learned a lot. So I'm going to get on on that and just learn more on it. Thank you so much for today, tonight. Thank yeah. Thank you. Okay, no problem. So I think uh, this is where we'll end for today. I think we'll meet the same time next week. Let me see, I don't know who is present. Okay, it's team that is presenting next week on data, I think data import, yes. So we'll meet next week, the same time. And also I think I did update uh, the sign up sheets to reflect uh, that we'll be having like from the ending of this month and first week of November, there will be break due to the time zone issue. So we'll see you next week, the same time. Okay. Thank you all for me again. Okay.